Today we are doing um, the second day of lesson 5.5, which is looking at slope. So for um, the starting slide here, slope, this cartoon just reminds us about the slope formula. And over here, um, it says you have to rise before you can run. That is our formula for slope. You always have to rise, which for these track players would be standing up, so that vertical direction, and then run would be our horizontal direction. Um, there are four types of slope, so this is just a reminder about what those four types are. Positive slope goes up from left to right. You can use rise over run by counting or you can use subtraction to find out how far up you're going and how far over you're going. On this one, you're going up two and over two, which simplifies to one. Negative slope goes down from left to right. You can take a line that has a negative slope and change it into a capital N. The line on a capital N goes the same way as a negative slope. You still count rise over run. Here would be down to, I usually connect it this way, down to, to the right two. That down two is a negative two. Zero slope, flat like the floor. You can also think about it as being that top or the bottom part of the Z. Very flat, floors do not have any slope. They are completely flat, zero slope. Undefined means it's gonna go straight up and down. You can think U for up or the side of the U. We could change into that vertical line. If I was gonna use subtraction here, I would get zero on the bottom. You can't divide by zero. That's what makes it undefined. All right, so let's take a look at some practice slope problems. The steepness of a line is called slope. Here it says circle the line with the biggest slope. If you think about it as a hill that we have to climb, the most difficult one would be this one. This is the steepest slope because it is closer to going straight up and down than this one, which is closer to going straight side to side. The letter we use for slope is a lowercase m. It says why it comes from the French word monter, which means to climb or rise. Sometimes you will see something like this that says m equals and they're looking for the slope. When we have the rise, or I'm sorry, we have the graph of a line, we need to know the simple definition of slope. So if we were going to subtract with our two points, this is our formula, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Remember in an ordered pair, x comes first and then y. The other way to write that is rise over run. Rise is how far up, run is how far over. So slope is a ratio of the lines. Um, oops, I was starting to write rise there, but looking at the words after that, that's not what they want. Vertical change, how far up, to its horizontal change, how far over. It's a number that defines how steep a line is. All right, so how to find slope when we have a graph. We mark some points in the line. We have to look for where it exactly goes through two points. So in this one, I'm gonna put in my points right there. Okay, so we are going to start from our left point. We're gonna find the rise or the fall. Up is positive, down is negative. When we find the run, we're always gonna to go to the right. So here we go up one and over two. Up one, over two. So my slope here is going to be a positive one half. If I go down, that's when I have a negative slope. You can only count units up and over for your slope is everything's going by ones. Here, it is going by ones, they haven't marked it five, but one, two, three, four, five, each one of those is worth one unit, which is why I can just count how many up and over. If your graph does not go by ones, then you will have to use subtraction to help you find your rise and run. All right, and then here it says later in the lesson we'll be using the formula, that's x, y1 minus y2, 
um, that formula to find slope. We often get fractions that need to be reduced or simplified. The images below show four attempts at finding slope of the line below. Can they all be correct? So we found the slope was one half. We did this right here. But if I picked farther apart points, I could go up to over four. That does simplify to one half. If I picked these two points and I went up, I would have gone up three and over six. That does simplify to one half. And if I picked these points, I would have gone up four and over eight. That also simplifies to one half. So on a line, it doesn't matter which two points you pick, but you do need to make sure your answer's simplest form. A fraction, or I'm sorry, slope can be a whole number or it can be a fraction. It will not be a mixed number unless you have a story problem situation. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look over here. Slope, vertical change over horizontal change represented by the letter M. We talked about that already. Rise over run. And then the other way to write it, I'm going to write it one more time here just to help us learn it. Y2 minus Y1, X2 minus X1. All right, slope represents the rate of change. It's going to be written as a fraction in simplest form. All right, so here it says find the slope of each line below. They do not give us any numbers besides zero. So we're just going to infer that this graph is going by ones, which means we can count rise and run when we find our slope. So we're going to start with this one. We're going to go up. We're going to go over. We're going to count rise and run. So we go up one, two, three. So rise is three. We go over one, two. So my slope for this one is going to be three over two. That is my slope for this line. I do not want to put it as one and a half slope. You need to see two parts, the rise part, the run part. We're not going to have a mixed number. We're not going to have a decimal unless it's a story problem situation. All right, I'm going to switch colors here. All right, let's take a look at our next one. We're going to start from our left point. We're going to go this time. We need to go down to connect because we're going down as we start from our left. That means we're going to have a negative slope. Let's see how much we went down. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we went down six. I'm going to put a negative there since it was going down. And then to the right two. So then I write negative six over two. And if I simplify that, I get negative three over one, which is negative three. I can have a whole number or an integer, this really is negative, so it's an integer, not a whole number. Because I know, looking at that, it really means three over one, or negative three over one. I cannot have a mixed number, cannot have a decimal, unless it's a story problem. All right, so that's my slope. I know it's negative because that line, I could change it into a um, capital N. If it's going that same direction as that slant on a capital N, that's negative slope. All right, let's take a look at our next one. So I'm going to switch colors again. I'm starting on my left point. I'm counting my rise. I'm counting my run. So it's up two over one, two, three, four. So for this one, it's two over four. And then that's going to simplify to one half, up one over two. All right, let's take a look at some of the information over here on this side. So it tells us the slope of a line can be determined from a table um, by counting units on a coordinate plane, which is what we just did, counting. Or we can subtract. So we just practiced with the counting way. Now we're going to subtract. All right, so find the slope between the two points, 3, negative 2, 4, 4. I'm going to do that work over here where I have a little more space. I'm going to call 3, negative 2 my first ones, x1, y1. And I'm going to call the second one, 4, 4, my second values, x2, y2. 
All right. So I'm going to st start with the second point. It doesn't really matter as long as I'm consistent. Y on the top, X on the bottom. Just like in my formula over here, rise is how far up and down. That is my Y axis, up and down. Y on the top, X on the bottom. Then we're going to subtract our numbers from our second part, ordered pair. Y on the top, so that's negative 2. X on the bottom, 3. All right, here I have subtraction with a negative, so I'm going to go ahead and do boom change to addition, boom change to sign. 4 plus 2 is 6. Here I have positives and enough to take away, so I'm not going to boom, boom. 4 minus 3 is 1. So 6 over 1, that's going to simplify to be a slope of 6. All right, we're going to try number 2 again. I'm going to do it over here where I have a little more space to write out my work. My first ordered pair was 6, 0. That's my x1 and my y1. And my second order pair is negative 8, negative 1. So we'll call that x2, y2. Y's go on top. So y2, negative 1. And then the negative 8 goes on the bottom. Those are on the same order pair, y on top, x on bottom. Now we're going to subtract. Our numbers from our other order pair, y goes on the top, x goes on the bottom. All right. Negative 1 minus 0. Okay, well, that's going to give me negative 1. I'm actually going to erase a little bit here so I have some more space to write. Negative 8 minus 6. Boom, boom, negative 8 plus negative 6 is negative 14. I cannot have a simplified fraction with a negative on both parts. This really means negative 1 divided by negative 14, and negative 1 divided by negative 14 would be a positive answer because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. It basically cancels each other out. So my slope on this one, I'll write it over by my original problem, is actually a positive 1 over 14. So if you use subtraction and you see a negative on both parts, your overall slope is going to be positive because same sign answers positive for multiplication and division. All right, a little more information over here. The slope of a horizontal line is zero, flat like the floor. Slope of a vertical line is undefined. That's going up and down, straight up and down. Remember, up and right are positive movements. Down and left are negative movements. All right, we have a couple more to try over here. Plot a line that starts at the origin, that's here, and has a slope of negative 3. Label it as A. Negative 3 is really like negative 3 over 1, so we're going to go down 3, and then we're going to go to the right one. 1, 2, 3, over to the right. Because it had a slope of negative 3, that tells us that our line should look like a slant on a capital N, and it does. It's going down from left to right. I could change it into an N. Okay, that's A. All right, now we're going to do B. Plot a line that starts at 0, 4, and has a slope of negative 3 fourths. So label it B. Okay, 0, 4. Over 0, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Here's my first point. And then negative 3 4, so that means down 3 over 4. So down 3, 1, 2, 3, over 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 would be right here. So this is what line B would look like. Again, it was a negative slope, so it should look like the slant on a capital N, which it does. That's my B. All right, go ahead and pause the video and try these six problems on your own. Okay, let's check our answer. So we have a, we need to pick two points, any two points. I'm going to pick this one and let's see where we have to find places where it perfectly goes through the line. Okay, we're going to start from the left. Looks like we're going to need to go down and then go over to the right. So that tells me I have a negative slope. I went down. I could also take this and make it into a capital N. So it's a negative slope. Let's see, we go down one, two, three. 
negative 3 to the right 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 3 fourths. You might have picked different things, but you should still simplify to that same answer. All right, let's try this next one. I'm going to pick the point 0, 1. That looks like 1, 5 is also perfectly going through that intersection. All right, we're going to make our step. We're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4 as my rise over 1. That line is going up from left to right, so it's positive. 4 over 1, which simplifies to 4. You can have a whole number. You cannot have a mixed number or a decimal. All right, let's take a look at this next one. I need to find two points that are perfectly going through that intersection. There's one. Here's one. All right, I'm going to find my slope. Up 2 over 3. It's positive. It's going up from left to right. So that's going to be a positive 2 thirds as our slope. All right, let's look at this next one. I'm going to pick this point and this point. I need to go down and over here from left to right. I'm going down. So going down means I have a negative slope, negative 1, positive 1. Negative 1 over positive 1 simplifies to negative 1. Let's take a look at this other one. I can also tell this is a negative 1. Remember, we could change those into the slant of a capital N. So I have a negative. It's another one with a negative slope. All right, so I'm connecting. This looks like it's going down 2 and over 1. So my slope is negative 2 over 1, which simplifies to negative 2. And let's look at our last one here. Point here. Here's a point. Up 1 over 1, 2, 3. Slope is going to be 1 third. All right, there are four types of slopes. Go ahead and pause the video and fill in those blanks. All right, so let's check our answer. As we travel left to right, our graph goes up. Type of slope, positive. As we travel left to right, the graph goes down. Type of slope, negative. Negative slope, remember you can make that. You can make the line into a capital N, then it's negative slope. This graph is not steep at all. It is flat. It is a zero slope. I could change this into a Z. And this one, the graph is so steep we can't even call it a slope. Uh, no, I don't know why I started writing up. Is not up. Don't write up. Undefined. I could change that into a U. Straight up and down. 